Okay, the next talk is uh, Julius from the Shah Conference uh, organizers here to show us behind the scenes of a hacker conference. So, hi all. Um, normally I'm not on stage. It's uh, For me, it's my first time actually, so be aware. Um, for those that don't know anything about Shah, just been here for the EMF, um, still hacking anyway. Um, it's a big, large conference, uh, 3,600 attendees uh, on the scouting landgoed in, back in Holland. We had around the fastest internet on a camp possible at the time. I'm not sure how fast it is here, but it was fast down there. Um, it's a five-day festival. It's similar to EMF, but it's way bigger and it also requires a lot of experience and well there's I'll talk you about it on what is gonna be um, who am I my name is uh, Julius this is my best picture they uh, could get for me um, I'm the secretary of IFCAT I just joined uh, around the uh, around December 2015 just um, when they really started to get off. And I've been with IFCAT ever since. Uh, and basically, I'm gonna tell you a bit about how things will gonna progress, uh, what we experienced, the good parts, the bad parts, and everything else. A uh, bit of history. Um, if basically, the Dutch hacker community goes a long way. I couldn't find all the all the pictures of all the events. Um, the ones that I do know is uh, Har, Ohm, and Shah. Um, at Har, that was back in 2009, if I'm correct. Um, they had a great event, and they wanted to start Ohm 2013. But to start on 2013, it meant a lot of legal things, a lot of uh, professionalism. So eventually, with OM, starting with OM 2013, we had a proper foundation. Um, some things uh, did go wrong, some things did go right at, e, at OM. And because of that, um, it took us almost five years to get uh, still hacking anyway. And the name refers a bit to the fact that uh, no matter what uh, goes in our path, no matter what happens, we're still hacking anyway. But to say that uh, organizing an event is easy, no. It's um, a lot of things that will come in your way, a lot of bike shedding, a lot of talking, a lot of communication, uh, we have a lot of paperwork, we have a lot of things. You cannot simply organize an event just like that. Uh, for the organization, we had around 35 teams all working together. Um, I colored them here so you can see a bit of what uh, the teams are a bit like. Uh, we had, for example, we had the bar food court vendors group together, uh, we had uh, the content, decoration, design, uh, logistics was basically, they split themselves up because they were too big. Um, we had uh, the drama, we had project lighting, we had all kinds of people working on making Sharp possible. Uh, that also meant that some teams were completely filled with people. Uh, most of the time, Knox said, no, we have enough volunteers. But it also meant that some uh, teams were understaffed. Uh, one of the things that I found out late, uh, just, uh, just during the event was that we had uh, a really short understaffing on qualified parking personnel. So we either had to grab outside uh, professionals or I had to stand there 10, day, 10 hours in the full sun just making sure that traffic got directed where they have to be. Communication. And one of the things that you have to do at the, com at the camp is communication. That's basically the key value. If you want to know 
who is what doing what you need to communicate. At SHA we had a lot of communications. Um, we had our own Orga wiki, uh, which meant that um, people knew who was in what team. We had an etherpad. Um, everything that was uh, set on the memory, they got written down on an etherpad. Everyone could uh, change it. Things, uh, shopping list were put on an etherpad. Um, well, basically all my, my paperwork was uh, mostly on etherpad. We had our own mumble uh, because most people were outside the country. We had Germans, we had a Finnish guy who was helping out. We had people here from the UK and to communicate with each other, well, we could use Skype, but with more than 100 people on Skype, it doesn't work. So we used mumble for that. For file sharing, a similar issue, we use C file. Some use the old fashioned telephone, some use the Skype. If you could not communicate through, through IRC, we just use those things. Um, a lot of emails. Um, I don't know exactly how many emails that were sent to me and to others, but I believe uh, Infodesk got around 1500 emails just sent to them. Um, one of the uh, good things was um, for our uh, search team or basically our uh, security team, we used uh, a system called Fear. It's open source and it's basically a lightweight Kanban board where people could quickly put things on and for every incident that we had, we could later see what was really going on. Besides that, we had many more things, uh, too many to list. Um, we had Kanban boards, we had uh, Google Docs. Uh, there was just so many ways of communicating with each other. It's, yeah, sometimes it surprised me. Um, when you start an event, uh, first things first, you need to get a field. And when I say a field, you need a field that gets big enough. And also, you need to get the teams to get organized. At uh, SHA, we uh, started, they started here uh, with OM 2016, I know, to, uh, no, even before that, they started at the CCC and basically tried to get people together. But getting, getting people together doesn't work. You also need to get them out on the field, experience what it is on the field, how it would look like, where will thi things be placed. Um, one of the things we had for, uh, as, an, as an idea was uh, to put an HQ down. Um, eventually we stripped it and just went for, um, for basic uh, equipment and tents. Uh, you have to stick with the team. Uh, the thing that uh, we had, and that what took a really long time, was uh, getting a good team together. Uh, people were thinking, then they got uh, shuffled around. I got five different stickers with five different teams on them. And, but eventually, when you have a team, you have a field, and then you have uh, a moment where you say, well, you know, this is the team that we have. Will we be able to uh, commit ourselves to actually build an event? Because you have ideas, you have things, but you have to have a go or no go moment. Um, I took this picture, and this one is from the from the deciding field day. Uh, it was August 2016, like less than a year from the event, and by then we said, okay, are we going to do it or are we not? We went to the field down there, we had a camping, uh, people slept there, we measured the whole field out, we said eventually, uh, we asked the, everyone like, yeah, would you like to be on this field? And everyone just said yes. But when you have, when you have all these things, always expect the unexpected because you think everything goes smoothly until you have issues or things that just go wrong. Mm, later on that. Um, when you have a field and you have an agreement, you need to go official. Um, on, the, on, on the right side, that's our, uh, that's our lead guy. Uh, 
he uh, went to the municipality. He said, "Well, you know, we want to make a we want to make an event. Uh, yes, we can. Uh, all kinds of things." And the first thing he had to do was sign a paper, and then things get official. As soon as you sign the paper, there's a 12-week uh, marker starting where the municipality will ask you a lot of questions where you have to prove that you can actually start an event where you can show that you have known about all kinds of things, about vendors, about, um, about safety plans, uh, about tents, where they're going to be. Um, we send a lot of agreements with vendors. Um, we had to send licenses for broadcasting. We had an, a radio channel down there, so they had to get licenses. We had the uh, special radios, uh, the Tatra phones. They needed to get licenses. Um, for the lasers, we need to get a NOTAM. So another organization had to do, had to look into it. Uh, we had sponsors, um, the badges. They had to do. In, you had to pay import taxes. So we had to send the letters to various people. Basically, a lot of uh, paperwork is just sending stuff to the to municipalities, to governments, and saying yes, we are doing it. Yes, we are official. And when they have questions, you have to answer them within three or four weeks, else your stuff doesn't get through and you have to try it again. But we got there. Um, also, one thing that we had to get was official licenses for the people that were on the parking. Um, if you wanted to stand on a public road, you need to get a license. And for that, you need to speak Dutch and you need to do all kinds of things. So, yeah. We had 16 people signed up, and out of the 16 people, only three actually went through the whole process of actually being out there and standing around and be happy. Well, another thing you have to do besides all the paperwork is a promotion. You want to make people known. So everyone was uh, basically doing a big sweatshop, sending out paperwork, um, we sent, uh, I think, 100 uh, of these boxes all the way to Germany. We sent them all the way around the world. Every hacker camp basically got one of these boxes. And we got a lot of feedback from them. Um, when you want to um, promote yourself, make sure that people know where you are, when, the di when you start, and also when the ticket sale starts. Because I heard people saying, yeah, well, I know you were doing a ticket sale, but you were already sold out when I heard about it. And one time, one moment, when everything starts falling together, you start to go more and more. You start basically start to feel the stress out. Um, the thing is, uh, you will see that the event will basically you, you set, get some sort of momentum going. The more you go into that event, the more you see uh, the things that you're gonna do, the, more, the closer you get, the more stressful you get, because if something goes wrong, the, the deadlines are coming closer and closer. Um, I'm, we're happy that we got badges uh, all the way from China. They are really great. They got them arranged. Uh, someone flew all the way to China j just to get, make sure that they were actually being made. Um, the teams were showing results. Uh, this, one, this picture was from the last, um, the last meeting that we had. They had a really nice design. They had, uh, everyone was showing off uh, the badges, uh, the badge prototypes. Uh, decoration was showing these lights where eventually later seemed to be working until the, the scene, until everything got wet. And we also had merchandise going up. So we could have a final check on what's going doing, what, what has to be done. And the good thing about it is the closer you get to the event, the more cohesive the teams are going to be. So when you ask it, when I ask, for example, to the info desk, well, I want to have a map with all the villages listed on it. 
Within an hour, I got a map with all the villages listed on it. When I asked uh, the batch team, uh, can you give me this and this application? They said, okay, I will give it. And an hour, I got it. So the teams were really focused on their specific job, their specific task, and things were basically rolling well, and we're doing great. And then the bike shedding, shedding happened. We, this is one of the many bike sheds uh, that I had to deal with uh, as an IFCAT um, team lead. Um, this thing is a sauna. Um, originally, uh, they wanted uh, to import the sauna all the way from uh, Finland with uh, basically building the whole thing down, tearing the whole thing down in Finland, building it up for Sha, and then five days later get it back shipped out. Logistic didn't like it so much because that meant too much trouble for them and it also meant that they would ha waste various resources on it. So the, the thing from Finland got scrapped. Then they wanted to build a huge tent and basically build a, um, yeah, basically build a sauna out of it. Um, safety didn't like it so much. They were like afraid that if the tent got on fire, yeah, well, you have people inside a burning tent and they were not fireproof and they had to be registered with uh, the permits. So yeah, God scrap that one too. And then they said, well, you know, we're gonna bring um, we, we're gonna bring our own sauna, but it has charcoal in it. Well, we had an issue with uh, charcoal on the field. You're gonna only were allowed to use gas or electricity. So yeah, safety sent the message again, then came back to project lighting, then came back to me, and then I had to say, sorry guys, you're not gonna do it. But there was an alternative. Somehow, um, the guys finally managed to get a uh, sauna on the field, which uh, they promised the safety guy, you know, here's the sauna, you can use it for the night, and we don't talk about it. Uh, the sauna was rented out, and yeah, it was rented out, it was on electricity, and yeah, things still happened anyway. It doesn't matter how good, how many bag shed you do, still, uh, if you want to have it done, you will have it done. And another thing that uh, we had to do a lot of bike shedding with was the coin vendors. The coin machine, we got a, um, uh, basically our uh, secret, no, our uh, treasurer got a message five days before the event that the coin vendor would not supply the coin machines because they feared that uh, someone would uh, enter the machine, hack them, and then uh, they could not use the machine on other festivals anymore. So basically it meant um, a lot of bike shedding front and back and messages, uh, why are you not supplying, we paid for it. Um, and then our, uh, second, then our treasurer said, well, you know, screw it. Um, I cannot deal with, uh, with, with vendors that, uh, that don't want to have a free, uh, how can I say, uh, free test of, uh, the so of the stuff, so we get a, we can just get another supplier and uh, got a link to the email, uh, send it out, and yeah, never got a reply of it again. So the competitor delivered. Uh, we had one key uh, when we got the machine. We got around 25 keys when the machine left, uh, left the, the site. So apparently someone was really busy with cloning keys. Um, although it was a good machine, uh, we had a problem with it. Originally we wanted to have red and blue coins for uh, the nominations, but uh, the machine couldn't handle the red coins and was spitting out basically all its, uh, its stuff. So we had suddenly had red coins distributed everywhere and then we had to change it to another to another coin. The vendor didn't like to have uh, all those coins. They didn't have those coins. They had to make them just just for us. Uh, we had uh, we wanted 150k. In the end, we got uh, 100k uh, yellow coins. And then 
after the first opening talk, I was sitting behind the machine, constantly refilling the machine because it could only handle 2,000 coins and everyone wanted to drink and have food and have a happy time. So yeah, the basically uh, the machine broke down twice during the day one because it could just simply could not handle all the, all the coins being throughputted through there. After that, um, we found out the coins were also static, so they clitted to each other. So every three to four hours, uh, someone rang the door. Uh, someone rang the doorbell. I had to go out, give it a good knock on the machine, uh, spray some uh, lubricant in there, and then the thing would get rolling again. And when I was behind the machine, people would uh, use the machine and then stick their hands in because they were afraid that the coins would fall out. And then I tickled them, and, <laughs> and yeah, sometimes I got a really, yeah, and then you hear on the front side, you hear, hey, the machine is live. And yeah, it worked pretty well, and then sometimes they came through the back, and then security said, oh, you cannot enter because someone's busy down there. But, and then they're like, oh, yeah, mm, that's what happens. It's just not uh, the machine is alive with a lot of pressure on. No, there's just a human in there refilling the machine. Um, when you get to day day, uh, there's a lot of things to do and also a lot of things you don't expect. Um, for us, the thing that we didn't expect was our, the family village uh, totally under the water. Um, we had a lot of uh, thought about it. Eventually, we said to the orga field, uh, and we put all the family village to the orga field and left uh, the family village basically untouched. Um, in the end, it was a good sign because the orga, the orga people would mingle in with the rest of the villages. Uh, on the other hand, um, we had to do some you know, sh shuffling of teams all the way around. Um, the pictures I, uh, that I have here, they're uh, pictures that I took during the build-up phase, uh, which was basically almost day minus six or day minus seven when we just arrived there. And I have to say, the picture on the right, um, that's the only one with the full, that ha basically had the full gear on them. The rest were just wearing high vest suit and uh, steel, to, steel booth. Um, some other pictures I uh, got from, uh, from the safety uh, crew. They bought a lot of, uh, because we were in a harbor, uh, the harbor team had to supply from the municipality vest, swimming vest, or some equipment for those that couldn't swim. So they bought, like, uh, I think they bought the whole uh, store out just to make sure that, uh, that they got enough stock. Um, we had, need to have uh, special safety vests for during the night uh, when we're directing traffic. Um, every stage needed to have some sort of uh, loudspeaker, so we, put, we had a lot of megaphones. Um, the municipality required that we had 300 meters of uh, fire hose, so we bought it. Um, we had a special uh, sticker, move your car or uh, it will uh, end up in a ditch. I don't think we did it actually, but I know that logistics was very happy to do it to some old cars. Um, in the middle, police came. They, they saw all the nice, funny things on our on our buggies, and they wanted some. Unfortunately, it, they ran out, and this was the only thing they had left. Um, during the event itself, wonderful event. Um, I have not seen everything. Uh, most of the time, I just was behind stage. Uh, these pictures. Uh, are mostly memories uh, that they put on Flickr. Uh, the Chunk one, uh, from what I heard, they basically tried to DDoS the machine. Uh, they tried to DDoS the machine just to uh, get the picture on screen. 
Uh, Nock has a nice write-up about it. Uh, the Shah logo, Deco just did a fantastic job on getting everything on time, uh, and especially on some very short time where we sometimes thought, you know, this is not going to happen, and it still happened anyway. Um, the aftermath, yeah. After you have the event, um, you know, you have to, you have to the clean up everything. Uh, I left when I started uh, when I uh, started walking around. The first thing I did was go to the POC tent and recover my uh, clicker. I was uh, wondering how many um, mosquitoes and vermin they actually uh, destroyed in their uh, in the things, and they set around 4,800. Um, what was it again? Uh, 4,800 wasps that were exterminated through their um, yeah to the electronic disposal unit. Um, we got a lot of fantastic pre positive press. Uh, <coughs> I talked with Jenny from Hackaday, and she said, well, you know, I love how you run the event. Uh, show us uh, to this year at the EMF how you actually did it, because uh, people have to know how uh, these camps are actually made. So that's how we got here. Um, we had a great event. No real difficulties after with people burning out, or we had some things, uh, people that were like, borderline, but I have to be happy that I had a really great team working on that event. And for the rest, yeah, well, I haven't seen any talk. All I did was just walk around, uh, make sure that things were delivered on time, make sure that people were going around. You don't have any moment during your whole event to watch something. I haven't seen jaunties around. Um, I've seen... Uh, Russ running and screaming and yelling and making sure that things were good delivered and yeah, you don't see anything un unless you go on YouTube or something like that. Um, I did meet a lot of people, a lot of people when I just walked from A to B or when I had to do something else. You meet a lot of crew, you meet a lot of people, you make some new friends. Um, this year, for example, um, I'm running the the postal office with some um, some people from England. Um, after the event, uh, basically, yeah, you do a lot of things, um, and you think, well, you know, you just pack it up, uh, ship it out, you tear it down completely, and. After that, the, the grass is green, and nobody will ever notice that uh, there was an event at all. But things don't always go to plan uh, when, especially after an event, you still, as a secretary, you still got things to do. Um, this was a nice picture that I had uh, taken from uh, the logistics team. They said, well, you know, we turn everything because. After we wanted, they kept track of what get, went out and what went back in, and they said no hoarding because we were limited on equipment. And they said return everything, even duct tape. Well, no. Um, the still 17. This is the list of things that still got missing. Um, around 40 bags of tie wraps, uh, 17 rolls duct tape, which. People just ignored the sign and just uh, got rid of it. Uh, some radios, uh, the Sligo cards, so basically for the Horeca, never got returned. Umbrellas, markers, lost and found uh, items. And one of the things was my inflatable unicorn that I brought there. It was like a two gigantic two meter big unicorn and I gave it to Deco and Later, it disappeared, and most likely Deco got rid and got it because um, I was looking at Hackaday, and then suddenly I saw this. <laughs> so apparently, someone uh, found it, uh, found it in the Deco shed, and uh, transferred it to the next congress. And Hackaday made a nice picture out of it. Uh, 
I don't know where it is now, but I do know that the police actually liked uh, these things so much that uh, got a picture last, I think, two or three weeks, uh, this one, where they actually um, got a hold of 35 uh, unicorns, inflatable unicorns. So next time I'll, when we talk with the, uh, with the police, I'll ask if they still need some more unicorns on their, uh, on the car. Yeah, besides that, um, after event, uh, things still have to be done by, uh, by the, by the, yeah, by the, uh, by the foundation. Um, we got three speeding tickets, um, all from the same, uh, guy who sped around, I think it was 57 in a place where he was supposed to be driving 50, so, we got three uh, tickets of that. Unfortunately, we don't know who it was, but uh, if you know, uh, if you have seen yourself in the mirror with a white flash, uh, please do come. We'll, ma we'll make arrangements for that. Um, we got a lot of spammers, uh, mostly TP tents, um, promotion materials. Uh, I had to shut. I had, had to ask Knock to shut down the info desk uh, mailing list because it was just getting totally spammed with uh, all kinds of commercial items that I could think of. Um, we had our taxes. Uh, when you do an event like this, you always have to have taxes. And luckily enough, um, most of the taxes they got uh, back from this year. So we made a bit of, uh, yeah, so let me say we could get some money back out of it. Uh, we had lost and found. People always lose their stuff. Um, most of the things got returned. There were a couple of things that we couldn't find. Yeah, unfortunately, we don't know where, where they went. And I always say someone dropped in TARDIS and went off with it. Um, you always get, uh, when you're planning an event like this, um, always get some overstock, uh, things that won't get sold. Um, we had these t-shirts, we had uh, all kinds of sizes. We thought, you know, we were making uh, a lot of them so that we could supply them. Uh, I still uh, still getting uh, some overstock from, uh, from uh, people that say, well, you know, uh, we have an a badge that's broken or uh, we have something and yeah. We're lucky uh, this year we basically got rid of everything. And also most of the things were donations to hackerspaces. Uh, I know some hackerspaces, uh, especially all hackerspaces in Holland currently have a full, uh, how can I say, a full bag full of uh, plastic cups. So nobody was ever in shortage of cups. Uh, all the things that we had in logistics, um, we cannot store them, so they went all t as donations to all the hackerspaces. We uh, could uh, fund a whole new hackerspaces with all kinds of equipment just to get them up. Um, well, I learned a lot of things with it. Uh, the main things I put over here, um, some of the things is like have a good supportive family, friends, and other things. Uh, don't try to overdo yourself, uh, and communication is key. Uh, things I should improve on. Um, this was basically a couple of things that people said to me. Yeah, well, I should uh, do it for the next event. And I will take the advice that, that the teams gave us into consideration for the next event. And yeah, well, the question I get asked is, uh, would I ever do it again? And when I, when people people ask me that question, I say yes. And I hope you also do the same thing. Woo! Thanks. Okay. The next talk is uh, coming up soon, so questions will be. Uh, in the bar later. So uh, thank you. Thank you very much.